What's going on guys? So today we're gonna go through a 300 hour service on a pair of Mercury Verado 300s. Uh, I'm doing it from home. Uh, so this is a DIY uh, in the backyard uh, on the lift as well. So um, if this is the first time you're doing a service, um, I probably wouldn't recommend it, but just showing that you can do it from home, which is cool. Uh, I did use this float uh, as well. Uh, and that'll help me out uh, to get the job done. So follow along. Uh, if you guys have questions, write them in the comments below. Uh, but make sure to subscribe, follow uh, for more fishing videos, videos on, uh, is it fishing, maintenance, uh, anything boat wise. Um, but let's get started. Okay, to get it started, you're going to remove the cowling. All it is is one push button uh, and then a release handle. You're going to just pull up once you get it off and you're set to go. You want to start by tilting the engines back to make sure you get all the oil in the heads uh, of the motors before you get started here. All right, to get rid of the oil, pull the oil, you're going to need uh, a 5 8 millimeter socket uh, as well as a 5 8 uh, interior diameter um, hose, which you're going to attach here to the bottom of the engine uh, on this bolt. Uh, so the key here is to make sure you have your bucket uh, under you and you're prepared and ready to go. Uh, I like to loosen up the bolt uh, on the side of the engine, uh, that drain plug, just a bit uh, so you can get this tube on. And then you're going to use the tube really to, to screw uh, off that drain plug just enough uh, to get the oil to start to dump. And once you get the oil to start to dump, you'll be able to get it right into your bucket. Uh, it's pretty easy, uh, it stays pretty clean. I would still have a towel on you just in case uh, oil does kind of spill down the side of the engine a bit. It happened for me just a little bit, uh, but for the most part, 99% of it got uh, into the bucket. So uh, once this thing's flowing, it may take a little bit, just because of the angle you're at, depending upon if you're doing it on a lift uh, or on the water or on a trailer too. So, all right. Once all the oil has drained, just take that five uh, wrench and re-tighten the bolt up. You don't want to over tighten it, but make sure that thing is tight. All right. So your next step is to replace the oil filter. I usually take a little bit of new oil. You're going to use that to lubricate the top. Um, but first, you want to take off the old filter. You need to use a filter wrench, uh, usually grab an adjustable one. All you have to do is really pop it off at the beginning. Uh, and then once you pop it off, I do like to hand loosen it uh, because I like to make sure I go slow enough uh, and use a towel just in case some of the oil does pour out uh, that you're able to catch it before it falls, you know, into the ground or in the water or whatever. So when you're putting your new filter on, like I said, just take a little bit of oil from, um, you know, a new bottle, uh, rub it on the top. You just want to lubricate the that uh, bushing at the top of the filter before you put this thing back on. Uh, it's pretty easy. Um, so once you get it back on, uh, make sure you hand tighten it, and then there's a little yellow plug you're going to use. All right, now just add the recommended amount of oil, and you're good to go. Okay, so your next step is to remove the fuel filter. Uh, it's just one piece here. This one's pretty easy. Uh, it's on the back end side of the engine. So uh, you kind of pick it off by those two red tabs. But the first thing you want to do is there's a connector, a pin connector on the bottom side. You want to make sure you pull that thing off first, uh, kind of pop it off. And then I use my hands uh, to get it off the full way. And then there are two red connectors. Uh, all you need to do is press down on both of those. You'll hear a here kind of push off um, and then once you get it off you can slide those tubes uh, off the back end side they're pretty easy all right now that you pop those off uh, all you have to do is turn the filter uh, and it will pop out of place don't pull straight up there is a groove on the bottom uh, that'll prevent it from popping out so make sure you turn it uh, and then pull it straight up really really easy uh, but that's how you remove it Okay, so to reinstall, like I said, there's a groove on the bottom of the fuel filter, so you're just going to want to make sure you put it in and turn it. Uh, you'll feel it tighten into place a bit, just don't overturn. Uh, it's pretty 
makes it pretty easy. The two red connectors uh, are going to be next with that harness. So I usually put the harness in first because it is under the connector, so it's a little easier to get to. All three of these will click into place when you put them back on uh, the fuel filter. Okay, so to replace the thermostat, uh, all you're going to need is a socket to remove uh, the two top 8 millimeter bolts uh, that are on the top, uh, as well as a pair of pliers because there is a clamp on that actual tube uh, the intake that you're going to have to remove as well. So unloosen these up and just make sure you don't lose the bolts. All right, once you have the thermostat off, you're going to want to remove uh, that intake hose. All you need is a pair of pliers to be able to loosen up that clamp. You're going to need a new clamp though to replace when you put it back on. All right, so when putting back on the thermostat, you just want to put a little bit of grease uh, on the thermostat itself, not inside, just around the outside on that uh, bushing to make sure that it doesn't seize either. So fit it on the hose. Uh, you're going to have to replace that clamp before you put it back on, and then just tighten the two 8 millimeter bolts, and you're ready to go. Okay, so this is probably the most difficult part of the service. So first, you want to remove the screwdriver bolt on the bottom of the air intake so you can pop the intake off. Remove the dipstick, uh, put it on the side, and then you're going to be able to pull up uh, on the actual top mold. Uh, you may have to loosen up the tube on the side and just kind of pry it off. It's just for bringing air into that part of the engine. Um, and then wiggle this off the top. Uh, and then once you get it off, uh, you'll be able to access your alternator belt. So um, move the dipstick to the right. Uh, and then you're going to start by kind of piecing in and removing uh, each piece so you can get to the alternator belt here. Uh, so the first is has uh, two screws. Uh, I believe at the top, uh, you're going to loosen both of those uh, and take off that bracket that held on the air intake. Okay, next loosen the two bolts on the top of the oil fill tube. Uh, and once you get this off, you're just going to move that thing to the right and out of the way there uh, so you can access the next piece. Okay, now you're going to remove the rest of the bolts that hold down this bracket uh, so you can get it off of there and are able to access the alternator belt. I did use a screwdriver. They were a little tough, so they had to be kind of broke, so just be careful there. Uh, and then once you get this thing off, uh, like I said, just wiggle it off a bit, uh, and you'll be able to get it off and access the alternator. All right, so to get the belt off, you're going to need these two special tools that you can get from Mercury. Uh, they have them on parts view as well. Um, so one is to help crank off the actual alternator. The others is to help get the belt up. So I usually use both those tools and then take a screwdriver or a knife uh, and it'll help you get that and pry it, help you get the belt to pry off the alternator wheel itself. Then once you get it off, um, you can just kind of hand pull it and you're good to go there. Okay, so once you get the belt off, you're going to want to uh, loosen up this motor on the top so you can actually slide the belt out and replace it with the new one. So there just should be four bolts on the top. You're going to want to uh, loosen up. You don't have to remove this completely, uh, just enough so that you can slide the belt out and put a new one in. Okay, so once you got it up, uh, you can slide the belt right out uh, and put the new belt in. Just make sure you put it in the right way. Um, this should be uh, the same either way, but just double check. Uh, fit this in nice. Uh, make sure it's sitting correctly. And then once you get it sitting correctly, Go ahead and re-tighten the bolts uh, on the top of the alternator um, so that you can fit it back on. Okay, so now that you have the belt back on, you're going to use the same tool uh, to get this belt to tighten uh, back on the wheel. So uh, all you have to do is kind of fit it. Uh, you're going to turn and hold that belt in place, and it should be able to slide right back in pretty easy. Uh, go ahead and put the brackets back in uh, on the top the way that you have and tighten the two bolts on the top of the oil fill. Okay, so to remove the prop, all you're going to need is a socket uh, with the 1 and 1 16th um, bolt. I also have a piece of 2x4. I wrapped this up in a towel just so it wouldn't scratch and then I had some paint on the wood too so I didn't get it on there. Um, but that'll help whenever you torque uh, the propeller around uh, to prevent it from actually twisting on you. So once you get it off, 
uh, there's a bolt uh, and three washers, I believe, that go with it. Uh, just make sure you keep those things in order uh, and don't lose any of the washers when you're done. All right, so now it's time to remove the lower unit. Uh, on the bottom side, there are five bolts. There are three quarter inch bolts. Uh, two on each side and one in the back and the bottom because you're just going to remove those bolts to get the lower unit off. And the last bolt, uh, the fifth, is under uh, the bottom side uh, of the lower unit. So just loosen that one off. Uh, be careful because the nut will fall right out uh, in case you're doing it on the lift. In my lower unit, uh, once I got all the bolts off, it didn't slide off really easy. So all I, all I did was take a little bit of CRC or you, know, you could use any sort of lubricant. I just want to get it in the in the bolts um, and try to loosen this thing up. And then I took a, a mallet uh, and just tapped the lower unit so that it would loosen up and come off. Once it's loose, it'll slide right off. Uh, it is heavy, so be prepared. And then you have your lower unit off. Okay, now that the lower unit's off, uh, you just to drain the oil, you're going to pull the two 10 millimeter bolts uh, that are on the bottom side here. Uh, the key is don't pull them both at the same time. Uh, I like to pull the, the bottom one first, and then I'm going to pull the top one. Uh, so the next time I do this service, probably I'm going to make myself a stand for the lower unit and make it a little bit easier on myself to dump the oil. But I had an old uh, cooler here that I used uh, so I could tilt the lower unit in there and get the oil out. But you know, once I pull that uh, the bottom one out and then pull the top one, it'll dump the oil pretty quick for you. And after about 30 minutes, uh, now it's time to put the oil back in. Uh, so I made sure I replaced the washers on each one of the bolts. Uh, and then the kit comes with a gear lube pump, uh, or you may have to just add it to it. Um, but all you're gonna do is attach that to the lower bolt. Uh, you do want to leave the upper bolt uh, out because that's going to allow oil to come out there and you're going to know when it's full. Uh, so all you're going to do is screw that in, put this into your oil, and it should take about a full quart. Uh, so go ahead and pump and you can see the new oil pumping in. Um, but get yourself almost all of that oil and then what's going to happen is some of the oil is going to start coming out of the top side. Uh, and then once it does, you just grab your other bolt, put that in, uh, and tighten it up. And then you can remove uh, the bottom side. And to remove it, all you have to do is unscrew it. Uh, oil shouldn't really come out, uh, so you may just want to wipe that up. And then you can go ahead and put the other bolt in, uh, and then you're good to go. All right, so to remove the impeller, you're going to remove the four 10 millimeter bolts on the top uh, of the gear case. Remove the uh, intake right there. Uh, once you get the four bolts off, this is going to slide up pretty easy. There is a spacer uh, on, on the top, a rubber spacer you'll have to slide up. Once you get the gear case off, and just pull the impeller out. Sometimes it gets, gets jammed in here a little bit. The kit that you got has everything that you need in it to be able to replace the impeller uh, and some of the seals in the gear case here. Um, so you have your impeller. Okay, so once you have the housing off, uh, go ahead and remove each layer uh, of the, the inner housing here, removing each one of the gaskets uh, and making sure that they're cleaned up. The kit should have every gasket in for you. Now sometimes when you take apart this housing, some of the gaskets are actually stuck on to the metal, so you may have to take uh, a scraper, 
uh, some sort of knife. Uh, just make sure don't cut the metal up because you don't want to rip your, your new gaskets, but you need to make sure these things are fully removed. So it comes up pretty easy once you scrape it. Um, the next piece, uh, removing these plastic or these rubber seals uh, on each side is metal. And once you get them out, uh, you can use that same knife too to kind of peel them out. Once you get them out, you can replace them really, really easy. And they just fit right back in there like that. Uh, so we'll go ahead and put all the housing back on all together. Uh, one kind of trick, and I think the hardest part was lining up the bolts and all of the gaskets. So I used one bolt uh, and stuck it through each one of the holes just to line everything up. Um, but then once that's done, you can fit on your impeller and put back on the housing and you're good to go. And reinstalling the lower unit, you want to make sure you use uh, a good grease um, you know, on all of the points, uh, bolts, nuts, uh, and everything going back in. You don't want to make sure that thing seizes on you when you get to pull it off again. All right, so the lower unit is heavy, so doing it by yourself and especially on the water can make it tough. Um, the key here was to make sure that uh, the rod is lined up uh, when you're pushing this unit in. You may have to wiggle it a little bit, um, but what I did by myself was as soon as I can get it up and in, um, I did have a bolt in my hand just to help and assist and get the unit on. Um, once I added or put that bolt on, uh, I went around and put all five of uh, those bolts on. Uh, make sure you put some grease on there as well uh, to help not seize uh, these bolts whenever you go to take them off in the future. Once you get them hand tightened, make sure to take the wrench and go back uh, and tighten these up. Uh, as much as you can just don't over tighten you don't want to snap the bolts uh, and then you're good to go all right so reinstalling the prop is pretty easy uh, just want to make sure you put the prop on hand tighten those bolts uh, keep all the nuts uh, and washers in order um, you're going to use your wrench uh, and tighten it down as much as you can uh, and then don't forget that piece of wood. Um, I put a towel around mine just to help and not scratch up the lower unit. Uh, but that piece of wood is going to help to get the extra tightness so that the prop doesn't spin on you uh, when you're trying to tighten it up with the socket. And chain your plugs are pretty easy. So take a spark plug wire holder and pull up each one of the tops on each one of your spark plugs. And uh, then you wanna grab a wrench or a socket drill and remove uh, each one of the spark plugs out of their place. Uh, and then replace with the new plugs. I tighten them up by hand and then I'll, I'll put a little bit of torque on them at the end, but um, that's about it. You just don't wanna make sure you over tighten uh, each one of them. Don't forget to change those fuel water separators in the bilge as well. But thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to jump down and click on that subscribe button below for more videos on fishing, fitness, and just blue water life.